Good boy, good boy. <laughs> good boy. Okay, we passed the dog test. <laughs> Crazy pups. The real test was going to be whether or not I could turn this eight foot trailer into something that would handle a 12 foot boat. So the first thing I had to do was take it completely apart. This old plywood was dirty, but not in that bad of shape, and I planned on reusing it. Another thing that I would be able to reuse was all the nuts and bolts that were holding this thing together. And everything that I wouldn't be using, like the little brackets that could hold 2x4s up along the sides, those came off. As did the trailer lights whose wires had long ago disintegrated. And even the axle assembly got disconnected, which immediately showed me that this foldable trailer had to be made into a full piece trailer. These long 4x4s would help hold it all together. Along with some other wood, like this here, <laughs> it's still good. Just has a few barnacles on it. After I cut it apart, I realized that, yep, no wormholes. It's still good. I attached these brackets to the 4x4s so that the middle would bow out slightly. This way it would match the boat perfect. I then had to mark the bottom where it came in contact with the frame of the trailer. With the holes in the wood all drilled out, I was able to mark where I had to drill holes in the middle. I must say, this was a pretty unpleasant task. Those bolts were going to be recessed into the wood, so I got the router out and dug out a recess. Recess. <laughs> Bolting these things down really tied the room together. This trailer wasn't going to be folding anymore. These big 2x6s were going to keep the flex out of the 4x4 where it can't leave it over the edge. And of course I couldn't just leave it square. I had to make the front a little bit beveled to match the boat. It was a lot of work, but worth it. The bottom of the boat is very flat, so the deck of the boat trailer I also made flat. This piece of plywood helped with that. I oftentimes wish that real life would go as fast as time lapses do. Even though I missed a screw there. <laughs> the rest of the plywood for the trailer was made from the old stuff. And on this chilly morning as Christmas approached, this trailer started to really take shape.
To help seal this porous wood, I used a lot of primer. And then on top of that, I used a beige paint to help the trailer match the boat. The same carpet that I used in the boat, I used for the deck of the trailer. And now that it was solid in one piece, I didn't need the hinges anymore. And then with it functional, it was time to make everything else look a little nicer. The trailer was really solid, but the back looked different than the front now. So I decided to make a little facade to help with that. I added some design elements here that would help match the trailer to the boat. Speaking of which, it was now time to put the boat onto the trailer. And to hold the trailer in place, I used some chocks left over from the 4x4s. Whew, that was a lot of work. Then it was time to see how close I got to balancing this trailer by moving those wheels back like I did. One by one I put the motors on. And as I put the last one on, I realized some adjustments might be needed. Might have to add a little weight to the front. That's nice and balanced now. Unfortunately, trailers are not supposed to be balanced. So the next day, I dragged it over to the scale to try and correct that.
All right, uh, 11 or 12 pounds, give or take. That should actually read about 70 some odd pounds because this trailer and the boat and everything on it weighs about 700 pounds and idyllic tongue weight is about 10%. Uh, so to get up to 70, I have to add another 60 pounds of weight to the tongue. I can either do that by moving the wheels back or by adding some more ballast to the front. Hmm. Might have to do both. Well, this is about the end of the line. Can't move it any further back. Let's test that tongue weight again. Forty-four pounds. All right, we're getting there. To add a little more weight to the tongue, I moved the spare tire back to the center of the boat. And to do that, I had to make a new bracket to hold it in place. Shifting weight around on the trailer greatly affects the tongue weight. Okay, there were some things that I had forgotten, like the swivel jack that's going to go on the tongue. And this here, this jack weighs about the same, about 13 and a half pounds. But one other thing that I did is I loaded it with some typical stuff. Now I've got a little cooler there and some camera equipment, my tackle, and then these two rods. So that should be very, very close to what I'm normally going to put in this boat and what this boat is going to weigh. So this boat weighs just over 700 pounds with the trailer and the motors and the gear say about 710, 715, and I've leveled the trailer and the weight pushing down on the tongue on this scale equals 72 pounds. So that's 10% of 720 pounds, which is Goldilocks. So that's really something to take into consideration if anybody out there wants to make their own trailer is have 10% of the total weight pushing down on the tongue. Okay, so now that I've addressed that, it's time to uh, see how this thing handles on the road. First though, I want to attach the swing jack that finally came in the mail. This was about the last piece. Oh, and figuring out whether or not I could get this thing out the door which sometimes you just gotta <laughs> put on your parachute and jump. <laughs> Woo! Well, that worked. <laughs> it almost flung me over, but it worked. Well, I eventually did figure out a much easier way to get that trailer in and out. But for now, I just wanted to hook it up and take it out for a spin. It had been a while since I pulled the trailer around, so a little practice wouldn't hurt. With this new trailer, I'll be able to take this boat to different places, maybe do some meetups, and go out there and do a little fishing. So stay tuned, because I have a lot more plans for this boat. <laughs>